Hallelujah. How you all doing? I have a short message to bring to you. I went to a graduation ceremony and uh, the president of this, the university, when he was addressing those who have graduated, he said something that has stuck with me all these three years. It's been almost three years that I went to that graduation, but what the president of this university has told the students who were graduating, I just cannot shake it off. What did he say, you may ask? That's what I'm going to use to bring you this short message. And I pray that this message will change your life the way it has changed mine. Hallelujah. The president of the university, he was telling shockingly the graduate to keep on reading, to keep on researching, and to keep on increasing their knowledge. And I use the word shockingly because those who graduate generally, they find it a relief to stop reading because they have passed their exam, they have succeeded in their education, and they were achieving something. Generally, in the mood of graduation, people have a sense of relief. They want to stay away from the books. They don't want to research anymore. They don't want to keep adding to the knowledge because they feel like they have achieved something. But the, the president of, of the university has chosen that moment to advise this graduate to keep on reading, to keep on researching, and to keep on adding to the knowledge. How did the president of the university do it? How did he come out? How did he express the, his desire for this graduate to keep on researching, to keep on adding to the knowledge? The president of the university used the analogy of a lion and an antelope a lion and an antelope in the bush to illustrate his point and the president of the university the way he brought out his idea have simply been engraved into me and i cannot shake it off what did the president say the president said that the, the lion and the antelope, they are both animals that are in the bush and every day they wake up, each of them have the task of doing something better than they did yesterday. The president said that the lion is obviously stronger than the antelope. Because generally the lion catches the antelope and the antelope becomes the lion's meal. But the president said that either you are a victor or you are a victim, either you are the winner or you are losing, you have a task to play, you have a role to play, you have a task to fulfill and that task is to keep on trying that task is to keep on learning and that task is to keep on adding to your knowledge and he said in order for the lion to eat every day the lion have to master the task of running after the antelope in a way that he will be able to grab the antelope and eat the, the antelope so even though the lion knows that he's stronger than the antelope, the, li the lion knows that the antelope will not just be sitting there for him to have a meal out of the antelope. So the lion has to learn to hide behind the bushes or hide somewhere. Or the lion has to, have to learn how to run faster to be able to grab the antelope in order for him to have a meal. Because if the lion is glorifying itself, 
in yesterday's glory because he has grabbed, he was able to grab an until of yesterday and he has had a meal. That lion risk of dying of anger today. Because the glory of yesterday does not affect the problem of today. And the problem that the lion face, faces is to do everything to maintain a speed or to run faster to be able to grab the antelope, the next antelope. Why? Because sometimes the lion will run after the antelope. But if you know the uh, an antelope, an antelope, they can run very fast too. So sometimes the lion will run after the antelope, but the lion won't be able to attract the antelope or to get hold of the antelope and to, to make a meal out of him. I've seen videos where lions run faster. You know, lion, a lion can run very fast. People say a lion can run at 60 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour. Uh, 70 miles an hour, the lion doesn't run that long, but that's the estimate of the speed of a lion. But I've seen videos where the lion ran after an antelope, but the antelope was able to get away from the lion. And the lion could not have anything to eat that day. Because that day, the antelope has played his game better than the lion. So the president said the lion and the antelope, they both are animals in the bush. That each day that the lion wakes up, the lions have to come up with a plan to get hold of the antelope so he can eat. And each day that the antelope wakes up, the antelope have to either practice, he had to practice or do something in order to run faster than the lion or to jump away from the lion or to hide away from the lion. The, the antelope has to do something so the lion does not catch him. And that's the point of the president saying that either you are you are graduating or you have not graduated yet, but you are still studying, you still have to be learning. Because how many of, of us have met teachers, they have their diploma, they have graduated, but they have not updated their information, so they become useless to us because the, the degree that they have obtained has become very old and they have not learned new things to update their information in their field. So the president was saying that whoever you are, either you are a weak person, like the antelope compared to the lion, or either you are the strong person as the lion, you still have a task to play every single day if you intend to have a future. And that example has stuck with me as I thought about the word of God, as I, br as I bring that into the spiritual realm to see what is going on. My brother, my sister, maybe you are listening to me right now that God has, has, has poured a blessing over your life and you are enjoying life. You feel like everything is so good. Everything is going so well. My sister and my brother, watch out. While you are rejoicing and you are grateful to God for what he has done in your life. You need to be learning to add more knowledge to your tactics. You need to be learning how to fight the devil better. Because the fact that you are blessed right now, that does not mean your situation will remain a blessing situation forever. In Psalms 23 that we know so well, the Bible says, God puts a table before me in front of my friends no not in front of my friends the lord is my shepherd that's the beginning of the verse so we know that god is is, is the shepherd jesus is the shepherd so we cannot say that verse is from a human or that verse is relating to a, a person but it's, it's talking about God himself. That God has put a table before me. Not in front of my friends. Not in front of my family. But in front of my enemies. 
What does that mean? That means while I'm eating, while I'm enjoying chicken or beef or whatever I enjoy to eat, while I'm enjoying the food, I have to have an eye open. Because the enemy is sitting across from me. I know many people they believe that because we are in Jesus Christ, Jesus has died for, your, for us on the cross of Calvary, and Jesus has, has given us a victory. We want to we wanna behave as if we don't have any battle to fight anymore. But Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle, we wrestle, we wrestle. And I don't know if you know the meaning of wrestling. Wrestling is different from boxing. Wrestling is different from martial art karate. Wrestling is different from fighting. What does wrestling mean? Wrestling involves fighting, boxing, martial art tactics using. Wrestling involves every tactic you can use to win the adversary. Wrestling is not like karate. You stay away, you make your, your, your kata or whatever you call it, and then you jump and you knock the person out while you, 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 know, you might not even have to touch the person very much. Wrestling is not like that. And I know many of us, we have seen wrestling. Wrestling in ball, you have to mingle. You have to almost mingle with the attacker. You have to touch the attacker. You have to get dirty, pretty much. You have to get dirty. You have to, you have to get in contact with the attacker and use every tactic possible to win. Paul said in the, in the New Testament that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces in high places. I'm paraphrasing the verse. We wrestling against spiritual things. We are human. The spirit can see us. We cannot see them. So we are wrestling against inv invisible forces. How can we relax? How can we just eat? We just say to ourselves that everything is all right when we are fighting an enemy that we cannot see that's an example that support that no matter what level you are right now you have to keep on fighting you have to keep on praying you have to arm yourself with all the spiritual weapons in order to maintain uh, your life you have to keep on fighting in order to have a promissory tomorrow the lion and the antelope. The antelope knows that once the lion gets hold of him, he's finished. The antelope acknowledges his weakness compared to the lion. Do you acknowledge your issues? Do you know your position? We're not talking about how we pat ourselves in the back. We're not talking about how we, we try to camouflage things. We, we try to see things in a positive way. And, and we don't call things by the name. But do you know your status? Do you know your strength? Do you know your weaknesses? The antelope, we're not there to fight with a lion. Because the antelope knows that the lion is stronger than him. The lion also knows that the antelope can run. The lion knows that. To be honest, the antelope run faster than the lion. You say, why? How do we know that? That's why the lion does not begin to run after an antelope in, in an open area. The lion always hide behind something. They want to sneak up on the antelope. Because the lion knows that if you start running after the antelope, when the antelope is fully aware of what was going on, the antelope will run faster than the lion. The lion knows that. So that's why generally the lion will hide, will prefer to hide and just sneak up on the antelope. Do you know who you are? Either you are a victor or you are a victim. Either you are a winner or a loser. Do you know who you are? 
Let's not play game, the religious game, and say here, well, I'm a Christian, I'm a winner. Yeah, you are a winner, but there is a situation in your life that are losing right now. Are you going to tell me that your marriage is all right, your children is all right, your health is all right, your money is all right, everything about you is all right? Are you going to tell me that, honestly, and don't lie to yourself? The fact that we are Christian does not mean we have the victory in every aspect of our life. Come on, let's open our eyes and see the situation. Let's be real for a moment. Every Christian has something they are battling with. Some are battling with sin. Some are battling with a disease. Some are battling with a spiritual problem. Some are battling with a marriage problem. Some are battling with a health problem. Something. There is always something bothering our lives. So let us not play the religious game and say, Oh, we are victorious in Jesus. Yes, we are victorious. Jesus is victorious. But do you have the complete victory of Jesus in every aspect of your life? Maybe you are a minister, you are listening to me. You can minister to people and, and be very eloquent and, and vocalize the word of God and act as if whatever the word of God said, you have it in your life. But God knows and you know that your situation, you have some situation in your life that are very deplorable. That there is a misery around you that is attempting to discredit your life. Let's be real for a minute. It's not a matter of, oh, I'm the lion. I'm, I'm the winner. Yeah, the devil is the lion. No, 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 no. We are talking about us as children of God. There is a situation always in our life that needs the attention of God. Something we have to be improving about. Something we have to be improving so we can win it. Something that is overcoming us today. We want to do something so tomorrow we can overcome the situation. The lion and the antelope. What am I saying? I'm saying there are some time in our life, we are the lion. But when we are the lion, we still have to be imp improving our skills. When we are the lion, we still have to be finding a way to sneak up on the antelope so we can keep on having our life. What am I saying? I'm saying that it's in our life, sometimes we are the antelope. We are weak compared to the lion. But we have to find a way to improve our running skill. So, we, so when the lion run after us, we will not be overcome. The lion and the antelope. The lion will say that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12, that whosoever thinks, whosoever thinks, He's standing firm. Let him be careful so he does not fall. Whosoever thinks he's standing, let him be careful so he does not fall. Number one, the Bible says, Whosoever thinks, you are thinking that you are you are standing. That's what you are thinking right now. Isn't that our situation? When God put a table in front of you, a table so you can eat, but your enemy is watching you, the Bible say, the Bible say that. And Paul told us we wrestle. And in Luke chapter 4, you say, well, that's Paul and that's the Old Testament. Let's find something about Jesus. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. In Luke chapter 4 is a story of how Jesus was tempted by the devil after Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights Jesus the son of God the sinless perfection of God he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights he didn't eat anything he didn't drink anything but when he was tempted by the devil in Luke chapter 4 I want to talk, talk about verse 13 what did verse 13 say and we know the story when Jesus was tempted by the devil. The devil presented this to him. Jesus used the word of God to overcome the devil. In verse 13, what did the Bible say? The Bible says something that we often ignore. Or many of us, we don't know what the Bible say. What did the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 13, that the devil left Jesus alone forever. Is that what the Bible say? No, that's not what the Bible say. The Bible says 
the devil left Jesus alone for a season. The devil, we're talking about the devil and Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus, who never sinned before, compared to you and I, we sin. We have sinned and we still make mistakes sometimes. No matter how, how our spiritual level is, we can still make mistakes sometimes. We can still not hear God properly. We can still not follow God to the letter all the time. Jesus, who has never seen before, he was tempted by the devil and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Not many of us can fast 40 days or 40 nights. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But when the devil tempted him, after he has fasted, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 verse 13 that the devil left him alone for a season. Some other version of, versions of the Bible say the devil left Jesus alone until he finds another opportune time, until he finds another better time to tempt him again. That's what it means. So if the devil left Jesus alone just for a while, not permanently, why are you and I are going to relax and think we got it all? Is it because we are able to preach powerfully? Is it because we can cast demons out? Is it because the Spirit of God has used us in the past that we're going to depend on the, the past glory? We're going to depend on what we have achieved yesterday or the strength of yesterday to think that we can afford today and tomorrow? Is that what it is? We cannot do that. Because the devil left Jesus alone for a season. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Read it for yourself. The devil left Jesus alone for a season. So that means the devil will come back. And we know in the Bible that the devil came back to tempt Jesus many times. He came back sometime through Peter. Peter the disciple. The devil came sometime through the Pharisees. The devil came sometime through Judah and all that. We know the devil came back. My friend, the lion and the antelope. I'm saying again that sometimes we are the lion and sometimes we are the antelope. When we are the lion, things are going well or we have the, 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 the strength. We should still be careful because the strength of the lion will reduce. If today the lion is not able to catch another antelope, to maintain that strength. Because the lion will be hungry. And if the lion cannot eat, the lion is strong. But if the lion is weak, the lion cannot do anything. So the lion has to keep on increasing his, his, his tactics to hide. Or whatever he has to do so he can catch the antelope. The antelope is weaker compared to the lion. But the, the antelope has to find a way to run faster. And maybe to avoid some places where the lion can be hiding. So the lion doesn't eat him up. The lion and the antelope. My friend, this message is challenging all of us to increase our fire in God. Whatever we are doing, whatever the situation, if there is a situation that is negative in your life, Let's say you have a sickness. You are praying to get healed. Because the Bible said God heals. But you are not healed. You should keep on searching. You should keep on reading the Bible. You should keep on praying. You should keep on anointing yourself. Or do whatever. Until you overcome the situation. Or if, if you are doing good in one aspect of, our, of your life right now. You feel like you are the liar. You have more strength. You still have to keep on researching. You still have to... Keep on increasing the knowledge so you can maintain that victory. The lion and the antelope. My friend, what I'm saying is none of us should relax or none of us should boast as if we have it together. Haven't you heard of powerful people that have fell overnight? Haven't you heard of 
powerful men of God or people in political position that something happened and their life has been destroyed, their reputation has been destroyed overnight. If you ask those people why they were shining, why they, 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 they have the strength of a lion, if you ask, if you ask them, do you think you can ever be weak? They will say no. Because they didn't see it coming. Life is unpredictable. The Bible didn't say pray without season for nothing. Jesus gave a parable in Luke chapter 18 to say they should always pray or we should always pray and never to faint. Why Jesus would give such a parable? What do you pray about? Because Jesus knows that there will be something in our life that we have to pray about. Jesus knows that if we don't pray, if we don't attach ourselves to God, we're going to get weak and something will happen that will sweep us away. My friend, God has laid this word on me to bring to you today. The lion and the antelope. Both of them. Either the lion, who, who is stronger than the, the antelope, or the antelope, who is weaker than the lion. Both of them have to keep on trying. They have to keep on praying. They have to keep on finding a way to improve their life. So they don't get destroyed. If the lion says, well, I'm strong. I eat until of yesterday, I'm full. After a few days, the lion will starve. And the lion can die of starvation. Because he's depending on previous glory. If the antelope, of course, relaxes himself, the lion will sneak up and jump on him and eat him up. So the antelope had to find ways to run faster, to hide from the lion, so he can survive. The lion had to find a way to hide better and sneak up on the antelope so he can have a meal. I'm saying in our life there are times we are the lion and sometimes we are the antelope. But in each case, in each case, we still have to come up with a tactic for success. How is your spiritual life right now? Are you climbing and increasing in knowledge and in God? Are you getting to spiritual heights? Or you are struggling? If you are struggling, you are the antelope. You need to learn to run faster, to gather strength, to put more speed into your leg, to put, to put more quickness. Giant step. The antelope has to come out with Either he, he should go big steps or he had to go or with small steps but faster. The, the antelope had to come up with something so he does not get captured by the lion. And the lion had to keep on trying because the antelope sure not going to just relax and say, lion, come and eat me. And if the antelope ran faster than the lion, the lion will stop. And if the antelope fell to run adequate enough, the lion will eat him up. My friend, I'm here to tell you that life is difficult. I'm here to tell you that there is no reason for us to boast for anything. Even if we have some history of accomplishing some stuff, either for ourselves or for God. I'm saying that no matter the situation you are living in, you need to wake up and be and be careful about your life. You need to ask God to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. You need to ask the Holy Ghost to teach you how to fight the devil better because the Bible says your adversary, the devil, does not realize. He keep on trying, and the Bible says, "Do not give the devil access." Oh my goodness. All of us, we have to learn to keep on working on our skills. We have to keep on sharpening our tools so we can be able to overcome the devil. No matter what, you are, what situation you are in right now, my friend, you cannot enjoy life too much. You have to keep on being awake. You have to do something about yourself 
So while you are enjoying life, uh, you are being vigilant on the other side. Uh, and my friend, for sure, if you are weak right now, uh, if things are not going well for you right now, uh, you need to double up your effort. Uh, you need to find a way to run faster. Uh, because the antelope cannot say, my legs are weak. Uh, the antelope cannot say, I am tired of running. Uh, because if he says tired of running, uh, the lion will eat him up. Uh, you and I, we need to be determined uh, to keep doing something about ourselves, uh, to seek God, uh, to pray, to do whatever we have to do in order to maintain our life. But let me tell you, if Jesus is not on your side, if you are fighting, but Jesus is not on your side, you will be easily discouraged. You will be easily weak and you will give up. You will not see the light at the end of the tunnel. Is your life in Jesus' hand? Have you given your life to Jesus? People who kill themselves, people who get depressed, it's because something is wrong with their relationship with Jesus. Either they don't have a relationship with Jesus or something went wrong in their relationship with Jesus. But if you are seriously committed to Jesus, you will have hope. You will see light at the end of the tunnel. Either your situation is struggling right now, you will learn how to run faster like the antelope. Or if your situation is smooth right now, you know that tomorrow is not promised. You know that the success is not guaranteed to remain there tomorrow. So you have to depend on Jesus to overcome tomorrow. My friend, the lion and the antelope, they both are in the bush. The lion needs to eat the antelope. The, ant the antelope needs to stay away from the lion so he does not get eaten up. So daily we have to fight. Daily we have to do something about ourselves. Sometimes you are a parent and you think you have made it. If you're not careful, your child will be the problem that will drag you down. Or you are a spouse, you have succeeded in your life. If you're not careful, your, your other spouse will be the person to drag you down. My friend, we all need Jesus to help us. As you can see in my voice and in my face, this is not one of the sermons where we rejoice and we are confident about ourselves. But this is a sermon where we ask for the grace of God. And we get determined to pursue God with all that we can. Because if we slack off, we will become victim of the situation. Either we are the lion or the antelope. We still have an effort to show. We still have to work on our skills so we can remain updated. The lion and the antelope. Remember, the president of the university who gave the example of the lion and the antelope in his speech. He did not give that example to the remaining student who, who are not graduating, but he gave it to those who were graduating that day. And I said earlier that it was a shocking declaration he made to them because graduates often think that they can relax. After they get the degree, they can relax. But the graduate can get a degree and not get a job. When the graduate get a job, they start at the bottom. And at the bottom, it's not a very trustable situation. You have to walk your way to keep your job in the company after you graduate. So if this, this graduate say, oh, we graduate, that's it. They might not be able to get a job. And when they get a job, they won't be able to keep the job. Or if they keep the job, they won't be able to be promoted. So they have to keep on searching. They have to keep on adding to the knowledge. My friend, I want to pray with you right now. You need this as much as me. So we can ask God for the grace and the power 
We need the power of God and we need the grace of God also to help us so we can keep on struggling, so we can keep on improving our skills, so God can open our eyes, God can open our ears, so we can fight better in the realm of the spirit. The forces that are fighting us, we cannot see them, but they can see us. We need the wisdom. We need the revelation of God to be able to fight better. So we need the grace of God and we need the power of God. So we're going to pray right now and then we're going to ask God to strengthen us. Either we have lion situations or antelope situations, God should give us the grace to play the adequate role in this situation so we can survive. Let's pray right now. Why don't you speak to God? You know your situation. I'm sure God has said something to you through this message. Talk to God right now and ask God to help you. Lord, I pray that you will help me. Help me to improve my skills in the spiritual war that, that I'm in. God, help me to improve my lifestyle of holiness. Lord, help me to pray more. Lord, Lord help me to be vigilant. Lord, help me to be simple as a dove and vigilant like a snake. Lord, help me to be an overcomer. Lord, help me to have revelation from you. Lord, help me to be able to fight efficiently against the forces of darkness. Lord, help me to possess the knowledge to live my life so it can become a success. My friend, I believe you are praying just like I'm praying now. Talk to God about your situation. Don't just listen to this message and then go. Pray to God about it. As a matter of fact, I would say, come back and play this message again and keep on praying and praying and praying until this message becomes part of you. The lion and the antelope. I want to pray for you right now. Why don't you bow your head, kneel down, whatever. I want to pray for you right now. And I'm not talking about a theoretical prayer. I'm not talking about a joke prayer, but I'm talking about a prayer that will put the power of God in your life. Because the word of God comes with power and grace. The word of God provides what, humanly speaking, we cannot possess. I want to pray for you right now, and I pray that the power of God will be extended unto you. So God can push you forward. Because sometimes we are just too far from achieving our goal. But when God gets involved, when we are far away here, God will push us to where we need to be and be successful. So I want to pray for you right now. And I want you to believe that as I'm praying for you, the power of God will touch you. And your life will never, never be the same again. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word, the lion and the antelope. Lord, your people has listened to your word and they need your intervention in their life. Lord, I pray right now that whatever situation they are in, either the situation looks like an antelope or the situation look like a lion lord i pray that you touch them with your power right now lord i pray that you strengthen them with your ability so they can achieve the supernatural in the name of jesus lord i pray that the situation that have overcame them before lord i decree right now that your strength will step into their soul, in their spirit, in their body, and let them become victorious in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that miraculously you sharpen their tools, you sharpen their knives, you sharpen their skills, so they can be able to fight efficiently and overcome the enemy in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray against any power 
that has been making their life to be very miserable. They are unable to enjoy life. Lord, I pray against those power right now. I command evil forces in the mighty name of Jesus to be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. I command every force of darkness that have overcome the life to be removed from the life right now in the name of Jesus. All stubborn forces that have been in the family for generations. Lord, I command those forces to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree that anybody who listen to any portion of this message, especially this prayer, Lord, I decree that these people will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree that your ability should be should mingle with the life, and the life will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because you have done it. Anybody who listen to this message, especially this prayer, they will never be the same again. Lord, do it and take glory. We worship you, we magnify your holy name. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I know so I know it was afresh. So we can bring more powerful messages to your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a better hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Take care.